welcome to The Reliables, a live stream series here on the Zombie Orpheus Entertainment channel on Twitch, brought to you in partnership with Pinnacle Entertainment Group, the makers of the Savage Worlds game system. I'm your host and GM, James Durham. The Reliables is an interactive Savage Worlds tabletop RPG where you, our audience, have a direct impact on the story and events on the show. I'm going to ask if maybe Christian wants to go over our store, but he doesn't have to. Well, uh, since I'm here, <laughs> suddenly, uh, yeah, I'd love to. I think that sounds great. We got a lot of good stuff in the store today. As we are with avatars again, uh, we are going to have friends with benefits. is going to be our, uh, our, our our best option, I think, for both players and for GMs today, because he has plenty of those. Uh, we're 15 bucks, so you can get, give uh, bennies to the players to use to move up and down their avatar sliders and to uh, save ourselves from certain doom and bad situations. However, if you also uh, you know feel like helping out GM Jam, you can treat the GM for the same amount and give him a Benny. Personality disorder is gonna let you choose where on the slider any given pilot slash avatar is. Uh, you just choose who you want to slide and say you, which direction you want to slide them in. Win, lose, or draw allows uh, somebody to draw two cards for initiative and take the card of their choice, which is fantastic. System Shock, which we have a few in the store still from last <laughs> week. Thanks for that. Uh, allows, allows complete chaos and throws us uh, somewhere randomly on the slider in the middle of just about any situation, whether it's convenient or not, and despite any plans we may or may not have made. <clears throat> I know that one makes me sound bitter. I promise it's not dance magic dance. If uh, when 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 you really feel like messing with it or just shaking things up and in a moment of tension, dance magic dance will make the tech play some music and all of us have to dance to it. No questions asked. We just dance like little monkeys for you. Story time. Uh, will you select a character when it's purchased? And that character has to tell a. Uh, has to tell a story from their sorted history, whether they are in pilot or avatar form. Um, choose wisely when you decide to drop that. A reliable source will take whichever character you pick and uh, put them in a reality show confessional and how they feel about the situation that they are currently in and about the other players involved in it. And of course, the rule of cool is where uh, you we all pick our perfect world scenario for a given combat round. You pick which one you decide you like best. That person wins automatically, getting a raise on their automatic success. Everyone else has to do the stupid thing that they just decided to do at a negative. And, of course, the hack attack. If you feel like this world doesn't have enough dinosaurs in it or something, you can go ahead and just throw a few in there if that's what you need to do. I am not suggesting dinosaurs. I would like to go on record that I am not. <laughs> I am. Yes, of course you are. Of course you are. Uh, and yes, that's our store for today. And of course, just for five bucks, if you want to say hello in the chat or give us some advice that maybe, or a hint that maybe we're not getting, you can do that for a measly five simoleons. And that is our store for the Reliables. Thank you, Christian. Thank you very much for that. Uh, You're welcome so and very handsome. <laughs> Please don't oh. kill me. Oh, okay. Um, I, you know, I think I'm just going to skip to introducing my cast, which you, you guys did just see, Christian. But let, let's start with Bryce Bebop, because he plays Vector Reigns, our space hero, war veteran, and hollow vid star. Brash, cocky, daring. Vector believes that he, in fact, should be leading this team. And is he wrong? Well, well, well you know, I mean, <laughs> Christian Doyle is Jonah Mox, serving out the remainder of their prison sentence paroled to the team. Jonah Mox is the last surviving member of a species of shape-altering beings. There is certainly more to this dimensional thief than meets the eye. No. No. I'm, I'm Gaga Shallow, baby. <laughs> Elise Moore is Ranger Rhonda Riddenhauer, the last Space Ranger protector of the innocent, instrument of justice, and best human shield. Rhonda's great strength is nearly a match for her tremendous heart. Helen Roundhill is Princess Hedgehog, 
the last remaining goblin from their dimension. Princess Hedgehog is a powerful practitioner of magic who greatly misses being the center of attention from their adoring fans. Together, they are the Reliables, traveling through time and dimensions to make the universe a better place, one mistake at a time. Before we get started, let's talk about the game system that we use on this show. Like many tabletop RPGs, Savage Worlds uses a dice system. The better a character or creature is at a skill, the higher the die used in conjunction with that attribute or skill. Success for many basic tasks requires simply a roll of four or better, with rolls that exceed that target number by four or more called raises. In addition, almost every die roll in Savage Worlds can ace. This is when the die roll is the highest possible number. When this occurs, you get to roll the die again and add it together, potentially triggering another ace. Initiative in Savage Worlds is handled with a deck of playing cards, with those drawing the highest cards acting first. In the case of a Joker, not only can that character take their turn at any time, even interrupting a turn in progress, but all roles made by that character in the turn gain a plus two bonus. Overall, Savage Worlds is fast, furious, and fun, just like the creators intended it to be. I hope that you enjoy the show and the game system. Oh, in this episode, as Christian mentioned during the store, we're going to be using avatars. Now, what exactly is an avatar? Well, they're beings of great significance who share a body with the mind and soul of the pilot, in this case, our heroes, the reliables. While within the avatar, the two personalities both exist and control often changes. This is indicated by a slider that you will see on the screen. This slider has three positions. Avatar, indicating that the avatar personality is in control. And cent uh, center, where the uh, two personalities are mixed. And pilot, where the pilot personality is con in control. Where a character is in the slider also determines which character sheet they're going to use for their attribute and trait die rolls. And what special abilities that they can use. Our heroes can use their bennies to move themselves on the slider. And you as the audience can use personality disorder as a store item to move them along as well. And of course, there are the system shocks, which you have generously purchased for me in the last episode. I just want to get yours started on the right foot. Hashtag benefits. Oh, well, thank you. All right. <laughs> That is nice. That is nice. You guys did give me those uh, system shocks, so you can count on seeing those pop up. But uh, for now, let's get back to our story. In our last episode, our heroes joined forces with their avatars, fighting for independence with the Legion of Liberty, while searching for signs of the insidious Galvanic Collective attempting to prolong the war. At the request of John Adams, they infiltrated English-occupied Boston to liberate a captured General Washington, who has been replaced by an imposter. They succeeded in rescuing the General in a highly explosive and dramatic fashion, escaping with the assistance of Reese, the transforming alcoholic stagecoach provided by a chat hack attack. Propelled along rough roads at dangerous speeds, the Redcoat pursuers had no chance to catch you on your return journey towards the Colonial Army camp. At the speed that this vehicle was traveling, you should reach camp in just over an hour, something that took nearly a quarter of a day on horseback. It is uh, a very jarring experience for the most of you, having not spent a lot of time riding in carriages not pulled by horses, moving at a very high rate of speed, and swerving rather erratically due to the consumption of copious amounts of alcohol. Does it still have the holographic horse pulling it? It still has a holographic horse pulling it, which Wonderful. makes it even weirder for you. Oh, yeah. Boy. <clears throat> So we're inside this moving box of doom. Yes, with the rescued General Washington, who uh, is not looking too great, but he's looking a lot better than he was tied up in that chair after being rather brutally questioned. Right. Now all you have to do is get back to camp without drawing too much attention because the soldiers aren't to know that the general was captured. 
sneak him back in and meet back up with John Adams and find out what you're supposed to do next. Great. Not too tall of an order, except, you know, traveling in a stagecoach pulled by a holographic horse that's an alcoholic. Traveling as fast as a car, right. (laughs) It it, it might be a little strange to show up into the Colonial Army camp in such a fashion. Look, I'm glad as anybody that I don't have to make a 10-minute dance to get any of these horses on a carriage uh, used to the cat piss smell that is on my body. Um, but I, I, I'm thinking that maybe this is a bad idea since this is supposed to be a covert mission and all. Rhonda, I gotta be honest. Uh, I'm really weirded out by this side of you. Wait, the front side? The back side? Because the back side, that is, that's just dirt, man. I didn't, that's not me. I just sat down. It was wet. That's not my fault. Pick one, honestly. <laughs> I'm good. You know you love it. I do a little bit and that's why it's weirding me out, lady. <laughs> You ever been with a bear before? Uh, probably, but I used to drink a lot, so. You ever want to try again? So, how far are we out, Reese, from uh, our destination? Uh, about 45 miles. 45 miles. Hey, when we get about five, you know, three, four miles away, you know, real close to town, would you mind pulling off the road and stopping so we could have a little whiz break? Oh, okay, uh, can we stop for beer if there is any on the way? I, I could use some more beer. You didn't didn't say anything while we were in in Boston? Well, I, I had some beer while I was there, but, you know, I, I could always have some more beer. Well, we'll make sure to grab you some when we get in town when we come back from camp, okay? That sounds great. Uh, and if you can not be too conspicuous, like stay off the roads maybe... Oh, I, I can go off road. Watch this. Oh shit! <laughs> and then the ride becomes remarkably more rough as you bounce off, moving off of the road over bushes and around trees, zipping along, not slowing down remotely despite the rougher terrain. And hey, since I have three of them still in the store, let's burn up one of those system shocks and move people along on the slider. Yeah, where are? I, get... I know my slider's at full pilot right now. Oh right. Let's move those around. Let's start up there with uh, Vector and uh, uh, the, our bull of Boston, uh, Mr. Franklin Smith up there. Uh, let's let's see if uh, let's go ahead and swap that and put you in full pilot and put Vector back in the driver's seat. I think Vector back in the driver's seat is the way to go on that one. Uh, let's see. Let's hop over between Rhonda and. Uh, uh, prudence they're they're kind of split in the middle there at the moment but i think this uh this calls for a uh, full prudence to be around so let's put that in all the way in avatar <laughs> and let's see uh, we, we've got full avatar going for uh princess hedgehog and margaret down there and uh i, I think we're just going to blend it a little and put that right in the middle so that there's still a little bit of uh, a little bit of both hanging out in there make it interesting and then John Amox is full pilot and at the helm there of Jean-Pierre. Uh, but it looks like we're going to go to the middle on that, too. So uh, nice and balanced, a little bit of Jean-Pierre, a little bit of John Amox. A slight change in things, and thank you for that system shock. So the ride is a little rough, guys, uh, especially going off-road, but it's still really fast. I mean, much faster than you know, any of your avatars have traveled in their lives. For so the pilots and you, not so much, but... Uh... I think I'm going to be sick. I think this man, man needs healing. Oh, yeah. Healing, this man? Yeah, yeah he's healing. pretty bad. You... Okay, so, okay, yes? Just, just, you got this. You're so great. Oh. <laughs> stop it. Don't stop. Don't stop. I won't. Uh, I'm going to attempt, even at the disadvantage, to give George Washington some help. All right. And how are you going to manage that? Uh, well, uh, I am going uh, <laughs> to roll for healing, I guess. Um, Using the spell? 
using a spell. Oh, wow. So you're going to use a spell casting. So what is your I spell am going casting? To use, my spell casting is on 12. All right. But you are at a penalty for being in the middle. So I'm going to need a minus one on that. But doesn't she have a bonus for being awesome? Thank you. <laughs> you know, not at everything, but at most things you'd be right. Spell casting, no, just that straight D12 normally. So if we can get a D12 for Princess Hedgehog with a minus one. And of course, you know, the D6 wild die comes into play on that too. But we've got a six on that D12, which drops down to a five, which is still a success. It's enough to remove a wound in this case. Uh, that's enough to bring the general around, who uh, takes a moment to take stock of the situation. The uh, off-road, high-speed, bouncing stagecoach that is uh, driving itself without anyone at the reins. He the individuals in the stagecoach with you. And then promptly his eyes roll up into his head and he faints. You know, <laughs> George, just take a nap. Do we, do we got a bag we can put over his head? Anything That's amazing. Here? He did exactly what you said. You're a natural born leader, Vector Reigns. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Guys, so, I think I'm going to be sick. I got to put my head out the window and I'm going to be sick all over this road. Reese, I'm sorry. I don't know what this is, but I think I'm going to be calling it road sick. Okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh. The sound is almost as bad as Hashtag the smell. Hashtag benefits can never have too many of these. Oh, oh. thank you, Chad. Yes, thank, thank you, Chad. So much. Oh, that exactly. was so much squirrel coming back up again. And unfortunately, a lot of it splatters along the side of the stagecoach you're moving at. And uh, he snorts rather indignantly. Hey, 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 watch the paint job. Watch the paint job. She's just Sorry. giving a new coat, Reese. It's fine. <sighs> you realize we are reasoning with a vehicle. He, he has a name. It's Reese. Thank you. Thank you. I am just pointing out the absurdity of the situation. This. Also that if she had vomited in here, it may have improved the smell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Close quarters are making for pretty unfortunate. Um, <clears throat> I feel like I'm sitting in a litter box. You want to talk about absurd? Uh, I was enjoying some beer uh, outside the, the, the Metaverse headquarters, and then all of a sudden I was in colonial Boston. Talk about absurd. I, I didn't drive here. I just was here. You just got sent, like, uh, on the mission? Well, nobody asked and didn't really tell me what to do. I knew I was supposed to help you when I showed up. I don't know why I knew that. That's kind of weird, isn't it? It's our bond, yeah. Reese. Me uh, and you. I, I would like uh, to do like a common knowledge to for Metaverse stuff from Jonomox. Absolutely. To see if there's like precedent, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> for, I guess I'm looking for precedent. Looking for precedent. Uh, in, yeah, in this case, uh, you can use either common knowledge or your smarts die, whichever you are better at. Uh, what was the qu what was it again? You can use either common knowledge or your smarts die, whichever you happen to be better at. You can use oh. either in this particular situation. Then I'll take the smarts die, which is going to be eight minus one. Because All right, a D eight and the D six wild die. Oh, there's a six. That's good. That's a good. Oops. That's not so good. That's a zero. Okay. Hey, that seven becomes a six. That's still a success. Uh, you seem to recall, you know, never personally experiencing it, but the uh, the people from the council, the masters of the metaverse, apparently these kinds of weird events happened all the time around them. And John Stone is one of them, right? Yeah, John Stone is one of them. I mean, he's not here right now, but that kind of stuff seem to just follow them wherever they went. Random objects or things or events just occurring that should never have happened. Okay. Just uh, completely against what would normally be part of that timeline or what would be even remotely logical. All right, I'm going to file that away to tell Paul later if I remember. And uh, with a six, it's enough to know that Reese is a name you've read about before. He's someone who's associated with the, the masters of the metaverse but okay. from where they come from 
not a metaverse traveler, not a dimension hopper. So this is like no. from Prime. Yeah, he's from Prime. Though okay. he's one of those unexplained things that just appeared in Prime one day. Oh. Oh, one of those like of those anomaly things. Got yeah, it. he is an anomaly himself, and him appearing here is an additional anomaly. Okay. So we we can't take it back with us because we're not physically here. So it could be a problem if it stays? Possibly. Okay. It might be something that the ship has to come and pick up. All right, I'm going to file that away as well. And by now, you have reached just a few miles outside of the colonial camp where uh, Reese has pulled to a stop as ordered. I, I, I guess this is as close as you want me to, to get. Yeah. Thank yeah, you very much for the ride, Reese. So should I like, wait here for you, or or, or what do yes. I do now? Yes, wait, wait. Uh, would we need you for a getaway later? I don't know. Could you hang out in like your person form, and like um, get you more? Alcohol the problem is, yeah. The big problem is the person form is like fifteen feet tall. Oh. Oh no! Oh, oh yeah. You see, I, I don't become a person. I like I, I transform. You see, like I, I still look kind of stagecoachy. Just you know, I, I got arms and legs, and you oh. know, That's that would be awfully conspicuous. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I uh, do kind of tend to stick out in places. Huh. So yeah, if you could just hide out here in some bushes until we come back. Uh, I'm good at will... hiding. And we will lead you to uh, some kegs of the finest uh, colonial warm piss beer. Yeah. That, that sounds great. I'll, I'll just be right here. Hide. Okay. Salute. And as you offload the general and uh, begin making your way towards the colonial camp, you take a look back over your shoulder, and he is transformed into a robotic humanoid looking stagecoach which is crouched down on one knee behind a tree and it's like sticking out on both sides rather obviously and not even remotely concealed that's precious <laughs> who's gonna believe anyone if they say they saw a giant robotic stagecoach man right not my not my circus not my monkey right can we Monkeys? cover up washington with something that anybody Besides prudence? Oh! We should just dress him differently, yes? Hey, me! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna need that power usage roll from you for Legion. Uh, yeah, that, if you want to make some copies. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, can I spend uh, Benny to get myself all the way over to Avatar so I can... Absolutely, uh, you so can. So I can hopefully not terribly botch <laughs> this roll. All right, spending one of the, your the bennies. further way I am from Jono Mox on these. And to clarify, are you going to spend one of your bennies or one of the ones purchased for you by chat? How many are in the store right now? I believe two, but I will double check right now just to make certain. Yeah, it looks like we've got two. I'd be happy to take one. Thank you, chat. All right, using one of the friends with benefits to put yourself in full avatar. Until so what he is your... throws another system shock at us at a moment's notice. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'll get to that. But oh, I know you your... will. It's what kind D10. of a die roll do you have for D10. D10? All right, a D10 and a D6 for Legion. Yeah, flat roll, because many... I'm good at this one. Son of a... There we go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Six aces. All so right. There needs a new pair of people. That works, uh, you know, getting those two together, that, that six, that, that an eight is a race. Great. So uh, that means that there's not one, but two duplicates which appear. Uh, and yes, I'm going, I'm going to be like, okay, strip. <laughs> uh, could you I'm going to have him, I'm going to have him trade clothes with Washington. Okay. And the two uh, of them, well, it, it's more of a... Washington gets undressed because uh, he's still passed out from fainting in the vehicle, so oh, no, he's they, not they conscious will, for this. They will 100% dress and undress him. Yeah. Doesn't look like their first time either. No, no. They, 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 are, they are experts at taking people's clothes off and putting them on themselves. 
Uh, easy now. That's not what I meant. Don't don't be weird about it. He, uh, you know, has a, he's a saboteur. That's how it goes. Is, is there any chance you could have your uh, brothers one and two carry um, Mr. Washington, or at least assist him? We will we will take turns happily, of course. Excellent. If you were to say, act like he was drunk and support him under the shoulders. Oh, thank you for teaching me how to do my job. You know, I, some... ap I appreciate you because um, I never would have thought of that completely common sense thing to do on my own. You are French, and I don't know really what the tech, what you know. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. My country is a place that has a history that goes back over 2,000 mm -hmm, years, mm -hmm. and you are from a place that was born literally yesterday. <laughs> that, that is true. Thank I you would for also like to point me. out that France is a place where people are routinely drunk in the streets, so he knows how to carry a drunk man. So see, even people from other European countries have taken what we do and improved upon it. Uh, the Irish, for example, are oh, I don't much more proficient I don't we think are. we learned that from you. <laughs> no, no, you learned it from bending over to the English for so long. Oh. <laughs> you have to drink the pain away. We get it. Prudence well. has just been like watching the dressing and undressing of all of these men. <laughs> Like, just kind of... <laughs> and in short order, you have swapped clothing with General Washington and our... And now he is very stylish. It's true, I can't really dispute that. And are escorting him back towards the Colonial Army camp. Uh, you are not challenged as you arrive, as your faces are known. And the strange comings and goings of the Legion of Liberty is just something that the colonial regulars accept as part of the way that business is done in this new world and this new war. And shortly thereafter, you arrive at the, uh, the original command tent that you met with uh, John Adams at, and he is waiting for you inside. Legionnaires. <laughs> Who is well, the, 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 I guess the three of us go with, with George Washington and go, bonjour, bonjour, bonjour. <laughs> and then the last, the last one like shakes a like Weekend at Bernie style George Washington's head <laughs> and goes, bonjour. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my. Is, is the general all right? Mm-hmm. Yes. I know yes. him. Well, we, should, uh, we should get him to a physician. I will get him to, to my personal physician right away. Okay. Thank you. No, 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 no. He's healed. He is. I healed him. I did that. I healed him. I did it. Your physician will probably bleed him to death, which coincidentally might be what happened to George Washington. Um, well, uh, just to, to clean him up, of course. Get him fresh clothing, of course. He passed out because he saw that our carriage was a person. It's just a... Mm-hmm. Prudent. Uh, because uh, we carried him the whole way here. You made great, great time. I'm, I'm, well, I'll have, I'll have him seen to, but for now, I, I would ask your assistance with uh, another matter while you're here, as you have rescued the general. There is his imposter to confront. I would request your aid in doing so. I believe Sorry, he might no. have. I'm kidding, of course. We would. <laughs> I believe he or she may be a member of the, of the gray coats or an individual with powers like yourselves to have so flawlessly replicated the appearance of the general. Good. My axe don't got any blood on it yet, so I'm ready. Because the blood smell will cover up the smell of the piss. If, if possible, we would like to capture and interrogate this individual as opposed to killing them. With more talking? I'm... What Fine. You cut off his legs, and so he couldn't run. And then see, we that's an him. idea. See, I'm just now, I'm now that's the an two idea. sides together. I'm, we are living in an age where people would die from breaking their finger on something and not washing it. Maybe we don't amputate anything for the purposes of detaining them. I did what I could, Prudence. They'll be alive long enough to get words out of them. So where is this future legless individual at? 
Oh, in the, the general's tent, still believing that they have successfully impersonated the general. If we could do so quietly, it would be of a great benefit. Come, let's go. Okay. Let's very quiet. I'm sure this will end well. You make your way through the colonial army camp and reach the general's tent. There is a, a guard posted out front who, of course, waves you through as you're with John Adams. And as you get inside of the tent, on the floor is a very freshly killed colonial officer. <gasps> the knife is still embedded in him. Oh. The blood is Should still leaking from the wound. That Curtis is immediately okay, gets it. down and just starts smelling, like trying to figure out what's going on. Like she's, uh, you know, smelling the handle, and then like kind of smelling the ground, trying to figure out where he went. Especially, you know, she's going to lick it. Well, you, uh, well, what's your survival skill out there? Uh, my survival is D8. All right, if I can get a D8 and a D6 from Prudence for, uh, doing some tracking. <laughs> and that is a first critical <laughs> failure of the night. Oh. Uh, the yes. smell is rather overwhelming, uh, and in fact, uh, you, you are mostly uh, caught up in the uh, the cologne that Jean Pierre wears, and it's just so intoxicated <laughs> that you're just drawn to Jean Pierre as opposed to following this trail that you're trying to track. Just like all up in the like neck of like just. <laughs> well, with, with three of them, it's just you know, it's it's something special. You all smell like sunshine and touch. Uh, right, clearly the, uh, the fake general has figured out we are onto him and has trying to escape we should lock down the camp here we go <laughs> <laughs> she's got one by the neck just petting his ear just holding <laughs> brothers allons-y come on <laughs> son of a uh. and all three Jean-Pierre's dash out of the command tent Looking in all directions, you, you, there's a lot of colonial people about it. Keep, you're not really sure what exactly you're looking for. Well, we're looking for the guard seeing like General you, Washington. The guard seeing you run out looks rather alarmed at you running out of the tent. What? what what's going on? Okay, did you know that people can put stuff on their body that makes them smell... Like you want to lick the inside of their nostrils. I, I am I am doing a scan of the complete area while he's asking questions and being explained sexual things. <laughs> what is sorry, your, uh, sorry. Have what, you seen your general? Skill? Uh, that's an excellent question. Uh, it is eight. All right. Can I get a D8 and a D6 from Jean-Pierre as they scan Looks like the Prudence is looking for something a little more than hashtag benefits with Jean. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the woods man. are lonely. <laughs> <laughs> a six is a success. Uh, looking around the crowd, you don't see anyone that resembles General Washington, but then you I'm do a double six. Yeah, I'm looking for people moving suspiciously. You do a double take and go back to another individual just as they're stepping beyond your line of sight around a tent, and that individual looks exactly like the person who's dead inside the general's tent. Oh. Ah. Shit. Shape changer. Well, we're screwed. They are the most powerful abilities. You seem to have gotten the wrong Washington. Hashtag jam also Terry's a prediction on how many of these I am going to owe tonight. <laughs> Halfway there. <laughs> uh, I'm taking off after him. All right. Uh, I'm going to need an athletics roll from you to do the pursuit. But I need it three different times because all three of you are in the chase. Uh, can can one of us stay behind to tell the others what the hell I'm doing? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Then only two will be making those rolls. So that way I'm only that player two times instead of three. <laughs> so what's you got for athletics there uh, for Jean-Pierre? My athletics is a six. Not, uh, not super good, but not bad. All right, so a D6 and a D6 for Jean-Pierre number one. A three and a two, okay, and a D6 and that a D6. That one sucks at running. <laughs> I didn't like him anyway. 
He's still got Prudence half hanging on. Oh, that second one gets an ace. Come on now. And that, uh, John Pierre number two quickly outdistances John Pierre number one, rounding the tent and able to keep this individual in sight. And of course, one of you remaining behind has now informed the others of the fleeing individual. Let's get Is there a point? <laughs> this poor bastard's dead. Should I give him a, um, just a funeral pile? Just burn him? Um, or do we need him for evidence? Does he have a gun? Pistol? Yeah, he does. Can I take The dead it? individual does, in fact. Yeah. You have yourself a, a, a pistol. It is, you know, not what you're used to, Mr. Reigns, as it is a very primitive firearm, but it will function. Take what you can. We should follow Jean one of them. Yes, we should follow. Yeah, he started running. We got to go. All right, so if either of you are going to get Yeah, pursuit, no, I'm way I'm, up there now, guys. You should we should I want athletics rolls from anyone who's going to be in pursuit. So, we'll start with you, Mr. Reigns. Uh if you're going to pursue, what's your athletics? Uh my athletics is a D6. All right, a D6 and a D6 wild die from Vector Reigns. <clears throat> Taking off in pursuit. Um, Double threes. I'm going to use a Benny on that. Uh, one of yours or one of the store? One of mine. One of yours. Okay. Roll that again. There we a go. Four to two. One of those is a success. That is good enough to make some ground. Okay. And then how about from Prudence? What is your athletics score, Prudence? D8. Ooh, wow. A D8 and a D6 from Prudence for giving chase. That's six aces. And wow, Prudence has got some legs and gains ground, almost catching Jean-Pierre too in the process. Uh, you're not sure exactly who Jean-Pierre is chasing, other than you were told a duplicate. So uh, you're not sure among the crowd who it is, but you're gaining ground on whoever it is that Jean-Pierre is chasing. Now, of course, uh, the person fleeing is going to get themselves a little bit of a notice check to see if they are getting uh, know if they're getting followed. So if I can get from the the GM rolled a D six and a D six as well as this individual gets their own wild die. One one. Yeah. Four four. We have a success. They have just realized that they are being <laughs> pursued, and so we will break into a chase where everyone is going to get to roll athletics to keep up or not. Uh, Margaret, what were you doing during the beginning of this people taking off running bit? Right, well, I, I thought I'd stand over the body and be like, oh, no, I didn't kill him. Uh, it wasn't me. Uh, right. Um, so, anyone who thought it was me wasn't me. Uh, right. I guess I should... Um, I could bury him. I could burn him, whatever. Um, yeah, I should probably... Um, yeah, I suppose I'll... Uh, I'm going to run. <laughs> <laughs> all right so we're gonna go through and everyone is gonna get a chance at making one of those athletics rolls and then the person you're pursuing is gonna get a chance to make one of those athletics rolls as well uh so we'll start at the top again and go with vector brains because he's in that top corner on my screen and it makes it easier for me to go in order one at a time and uh you were at d6 also for athletics oh all right. I'm going to spend a Benny, and uh, oh, the bull is meant to chase. <laughs> oh, oh, so you're going to the center. So we're going center form. Okay, going to the center. And uh, now my athletics is a 12. All right, but in the center, it's at a minus one, but that 12 is a big step up. So a D12 and a D6. It aced, though, so uh, wow, it's going to be really, really difficult to uh, beat an 18 on the athletics roll. But we're going to hang on to that. Uh, hard to beat. Uh, I love that the freight train guy is chasing after someone and the train is in the background. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Everybody move! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, for uh, Prudence, I'm going to need that D8 and D6 athletics roll as well. I had all this other stuff to do, but it looks like uh, uh, 
I'm, I'm going to get beat in the foot race, so I'm just going to go ahead and roll athletics. I'm going to go with a D8. Oh, a one and a three. You're not going to be gaining much ground on that one. That's all right. That's all right. Uh, and, and Margaret May, who is just now leaving the starting line, I'm going to need an athletics roll from you. What is uh, your athletics roll? And you, of course, being in the center, can use either yeah. Margaret May's or Princess Hedgehog's. I feel like, actually, I'll be at a, a greater advantage if I fly. <laughs> oh! <laughs> yeah. If I wasn't full avatar, I could do something similar. I was thinking the same thing a second ago. That's a, that's in that a good case, way to go. I want a spell casting roll from you instead. So that's going to be yep, the D12. So that's that's going to be the D12. All right, a D12 and a D6 uh, in the center. You're at minus one there. Ooh. Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna spend a Benny on that. <laughs> All right, one Benny spent. Go ahead and re-roll that for us. Are you oh. kidding? <laughs> oh, that's still not going to do it. So, so I'm going to like jump and then uh get like five feet and then go whoo oh i winded <laughs> <laughs> too far <laughs> you got him you uh, got, you got then, him. now that goes to our jean pierre's which we have two which are still in the foot race so well, no, I mean, the other chances. one should probably run off after everybody, too. We might as well have them all running. <laughs> okay, uh, and th those are all D6s. Those D6. are all D6s, yeah. All right. Because I'm full avatar. D6 and D6. Jean-Pierre, one, gets an ace on there, gets some ground. Uh, Jean-Pierre, two. So we have a... Uh, uh, we got four dice seven. on that one, but seven on the first one. Okay, Jean-Pierre, two, gets his own roll at six and six. <laughs> uh, we'll do Jean-Pierre two and three at the same time, it looks like. Great. All right. Looks like they both aced. Is that right? <laughs> Not quite. Uh, looks like we have uh, one that did and uh, one that didn't. No, okay. neither of those aced. Sorry, I'm looking at my screen a little wrong there. No, yeah, neither of those aced, but they're still enough to stay in the race. Yep. All right. And then, of course, the poor guy trying to make his getaway is competing with a 17 and he just gets to roll a d6 and d6 and hope that that die explodes a whole bunch of times so i can get one more d6 and d6 for the gm for the uh individual in flight oh no <laughs> hey a six aces they've got a chance oh not so much though <laughs> oh a seven and in mid stride you are able to catch up with this individual which uh, again you noticed uh robert franklin smith uh, identical to the dead guy back in the general's tent like identical <clears throat> can i just poof to the back of the head as we're running like i don't stop i just want to run through him with a fist to the head <laughs> i i'm gonna need a Remember, fighting he roll needs from to you survive this experience <laughs> uh. gonna need a fighting roll from you what do you have for your fighting uh, skill i have a d12 <laughs> all right a d12 <laughs> and a d6 <laughs> Minus one, because you're in the center. That's oh, a not so good. That's one of my bennies. All right, spending one of your bennies to roll that again. Let's try a different time with that one. Okay. And eight is much better. And even with the minus one, going to beat this individual's parry. And uh, you're going to get to do unarmed damage. And what? what is Robert Franklin Smith's unarmed damage? It's a D12 plus a D4. Plus three. Oof. D12, D4, plus three for damage. Ouch. So that part where he survives? It's wow. questionable right now. We're we'll going to see. see what these dice roll end up at. Oh, man. Uh, so 13 total damage is inflicted, which uh, you're, you're not going to kill this individual, but uh, you, you do fracture some bones as you knock him to the ground. And as he hits the ground, spasming in pain, his uh, skin, his face, his body, he shifts for a minute. And he looks like George Washington. And then he looks like the guard. And then he looks like some other random colonial person. And then he looks like a very plain, kind of small, like five foot two, blonde haired man. Just, just stay on the ground for a bit. 
He seems to weigh his options at trying to make a getaway, and by then, there are now three Jean-Pierres and a Prudence standing over him as well, at which point he just puts his hands up. Prudence just takes the axe and, like, buries it into the ground Oop. right next to his feet. Like, between the toes. Uh, I, I surrender. I surrender. Good call. Good. We can't decide if we care or not. So that's the problem. What do you think, boys? Should we kill him? Oh, we, uh, we, we, we. We have some questions. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Is there questions. someplace quiet we can take him? You could probably take him back to the general's tent as there's only a dead body in there for now. Okay. Only one right now. Right, I was very suspicious, uh, so um, I don't think, I mean, people might have thought we killed him, I don't know, um, so hopefully not, uh, right. no, it's fine. Uh, you were able to learn from the guard, Margaret, that uh, the guard saw this particular officer enter, it was allegedly to deliver a message, uh, then immediately leave, but apparently from what you've been able to gather, the officer entered, was stabbed in the chest, and in fact, taken their place was taken, and that person left. So your imposter somehow knew that you were coming for him. What was in the letter? <clears throat> there were just dispatches from the front, specifically from the front in uh, New York. Oh. Mm hmm. So that could be potentially bad if this guy gets out. He knows things. What? What's your name, boy? The Darwin. Darwin, okay, Darwin, we we need to have a little dialogue here. So let's pretend that my friend doesn't have a big axe and there's not three of this John guy who who don't like you. Darwin, I want you to get through this. I'm here for you, okay? Yeah, yeah, gotcha, gotcha, here so, for me. So hey. let's, let's start answering some questions. Uh, so, well... Go ahead, what, do you know, what do you know? Does that mean we should start asking questions? I was going to let him talk and see what he wanted to tell us first, but you know both work. I, you're, you're not going to believe me, but I, so I, 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 ten minutes ago, this this messenger walks into the tent, and for some reason, I'm George Washington, and I don't know why, and I, I knew this was a bad place to be, so I stabbed him, and I took his place, and I ran, and. Then you guys chased me. I don't even know how I got here. You're right, Darwin. <clears throat> I don't believe you. That's real suspicious. Um, I neither do I. You know what? And Prudence just like sits down, like facing him, takes her axe, and just starts cutting into her face, making really aggressive eye contact. Whoa! With him. <laughs> Whoa! Just... She's doing that to herself, Darwin. Think what she's gonna do to you. And like <laughs> licking the blood, and no. just going, you want to no. try it? You want to try it? I'm telling you the truth. No. Telling you the truth. I, I don't know how I got here. I'm telling the truth. I don't like this anymore, Prudence. Yeah. Um. Uh, where am, where am I on the slider? Where are you on the slider? You are full avatar at the moment. <laughs> I'm just going to have to hope for a joker later and spend that Benny. <laughs> All right, spending a Benny. Uh, Put yourself myself, in the center? Put myself in the center. All right. Uh, okay. Did you feel like there was somebody riding along with you, Darwin? I, no, I, I just... So four days ago, five days ago, I was... I don't know what, what day is it. Is it? It's it's March, right? Yes. Is it okay? I I haven't seen a calendar. In a while, I don't know. So. We don't got calendars in the woods. <laughs> Adam, what's I, the date? It's March eleventh. Okay. okay. I it, it was the first. I had just gotten off a ship in Boston, and. I, I, I enjoyed myself for a couple of days, taking the place of some individuals. Uh, their wives were great to me. It was wonderful. And then suddenly I'm here. 
Was he a is he a, a known gray coat? Uh you don't know all of the gray coats and what they are, but the shape changers among them are not unheard of. He's not a Legion of Liberty, though. Absolutely not. Hmm. D does he seem to be telling the truth? Like, does he... I believe him. You kind of buy it. I mean, it does sound ridiculous and absolutely absurd. And we don't know what the Galvanists do when they take over your body, whether you remember anything or not. There's a good yeah. reason to believe that he's been taken over. And then, I mean, obviously, if who's where right now as far as uh, how much you you are? You're, you're in good shape, right, Vec? Yeah, middle. Okay, so, and this is weird because my brain is all muddled right now. Uh... I think that the Galvanists were doing the George Wall, like made this guy be George Washington mm. while they had while they had him kidnapped to basically uh, uh, prolong the war. I you know more like, about uh, they they me. don't seem to have any interest in winning it, right? What would they gain if for a longer war? What would the Galvanists gain? Yeah. Time. Time to strip this place of whatever they need from it, mm. right? Huge chaotic situation, a, a giant war in a brand new world. I mean, it's going to draw a lot well, of in, attention. In the right circumstances, bodies are a, a resource as well. So what are they taking? Do we know what orders that fake George Washington tried to pass? That yeah. is a great question. What's he You do have out? access to those. Now, from John Adams, you do have access to those. They have been monitoring all of the orders he has sent out. John Adams, in fact, over the past several days, had been intercepting and contradicting some of them in order to make sure that things work a little better, but a lot of it was just tactical blunders, sending troops to the wrong locations, things that would result in not having colonial victories, giving easy victories over to the British invaders with that just they, they didn't make sense on a, on a strategic level. They would simply certainly prolong the war as at the current moment, the, the colonists are winning. They're, they've I had some a, rather decisive victories. Can I do a smarts check to see, like, how much they're blundering? Absolutely. I'll allow that. I don't have uh, knowledge tactics or anything like that, but I do have a, a, a 10 uh, smarts. So. All right. I'll take a D10 and a D6 for the smarts roll there from the uh, John Amok slash Jean-Pierre. Nope. And uh, oh, even with a minus one, I can still get something. Yep. Still a success. Y you can't tell for sure exactly how bad, but... They're, they're mostly seem to you to be minor tactical blunders, like not absolutely handing the war over, but making minor mistakes, enough that probably wouldn't even get noticed in the long term. They're just <laughs> drawing things out. Just drawing things out. So what are they, like, what, what are the Galvanists taking? Like, they're obviously drawing things out to, you know, get more of whatever it is that they're taking. What are they taking? Is it, you know, is it energy from the Earth's core? Are there energon cubes here? Like, what's the deal? Uh, I, um, uh, sorry, I, I, I don't want to interrupt you guys, but uh, energy from the Earth's core, I don't know why that sounds familiar, but that sounds really familiar to me. Oh, great. Hmm. Ah. That's a, Why does that sound familiar? That's just like if you're gonna, you know, just one of those things, Darwin. Just, just let it go, unless you uh, really think on it more. Yeah, you know, your choice. Um, something. Uh, the entire leadership of the rebellion is going to be crushed in Philadelphia. Wait, what? I don't know why I know that, but I know that. Is the entire leadership of the rebellion in Philadelphia? 
Well, the uh, we're the rebellion. Yeah. As far as you know, you're not really sure, but you could probably ask Adams about something like that. Great. Um, Oi. Let's get him. All right. Adam. You uh, join John Adams, who's uh, sending out some dispatches and waiting for the general to recover. Legionnaires, you have uh, captured the imposter, I was told. We have. And mm -hmm. without raising too much of a fuss, it seems. That is excellent. Have you been able to learn anything from this agent of England? Um, who's all in Philadelphia? Just, you know, wondering. Uh, like, the, the Continental Congress are going to meet at the State House there in oh. just a few days. Oh. Well, they're going to be attacked. That's where the information we got. They're going to be attacked in full force. Mm hmm. I will send dispatches to have as many troops there as possible. Uh, perhaps, perhaps you could assist them after you uh, attend to matters in New York. It's along the way. Yes, of course. Yeah. What, what are we doing in New York again? Well, I've received some of these dispatches on the front in New York. It seems that uh, British naval vessels have laid siege to the city, and they're employing the use of gray coats, the powered individuals of the. Uh, crown to attack weapons emplacements, and we need to use some of our own to stop it. Yes, of course, we'll stop on the way. Good. The only blood I've gotten on this axe is my own. Which you yeah, she's about doing that. That would be great. She's just still bleeding from the face. Can uh, I? The, can the wounds you? have closed. Can I, can I for the record, that? Adams. Okay. Yes. Adam, while we are gone, uh, we, we should be able to get there very quickly. Uh, do you know if either our side or the other has a large mining operation or digging operation? Uh, I, I believe I heard rumors that the uh, Navy, the British Navy, was importing mining equipment. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait. Do you know uh, what port they were taking that to? I, I don't know for certain just yet. Uh, look These are only scarce rumors. If you find out the answer to that, uh, leave word for us in New York. And I will do so. If we've already left there, also leave word in Philadelphia. I will forward it on as quickly as possible. Uh, go to New York and assist uh, Colonel James Holmes and the 4th New York Regiment. We'll report in Would love to hear the story of how Rhonda got her human shield badge when we get a chance. Somebody paid for a story time. We want to hear from all well, the Ranger Rhonda about the human shield, but we're going to have to wait till Ranger Rhonda's in the driver's seat. <laughs> oh. Because right now she is only dear Prudence. Oh, yes. Prudence. Which, uh, again, if, if, it, if it didn't get skipped over there, it should be very important to note that while she cut her own face open, Prudence's facial wounds have completely healed, though the blood stains are still there. And she probably will be there for a while if her taking any sort of a notice of her cleanliness and uh, hygiene habits. So Just gross. getting ready for battle. Nothing scares the crap out of people like a bloody face bear woman running in. You know, Indeed. you're not wrong. I think that's right. But think of the trial and error you have to go through to figure that out. Oh, there was a lot of other substances before blood that went into it. But you finally landed on the one that does the trick, and that's what's important. No. Oh, no. No, thank you. Prude Pru just takes one wipe and just wipes it on Maggie's face. Here you go. Oh, oh that's... <laughs> no, no, thank you. Okay, oh, nice. Uh, just having my pilot's knowledge of pathogens, I am so fucking squeaked out right now by that. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> you All right, let's go find that drunk carriage. <laughs> Indeed. Oh, can, can you I grab a keg? Oh, uh, yes. you can. Uh, you can actually quite physically pick up and carry a keg. Uh, carry and you can carry a, a couple of yeah, them. Yeah, I'm just gonna carry. It's two not kegs. even a burden for you. <laughs> Great. Let's. <carry> a <laughs> because of who you are, no one even attempts to stop you. Sounds like a good plan. Keg, keg, keg. 
Uh, you carry them back to the woods where uh, still crouched down behind a tree is the transformed Reese still completely in plain view as you reach there. <laughs> where did he go? Bonjour, Monsieur Reese. Where are you? He's... I'm over here. I'm hiding good. So stealthy. Oh, good. We did not see you there. I'm really good at hiding. You are. You are. Yeah, I learned from watching this guy, Patrick. <laughs> Patrick. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Patrick is really good at hiding and yes, he, blowing he stuff sounds, up. He sounds delightful. I, I'm just drinking like, with Patrick. I do like blowing things up. Reese. <laughs> oh. We gotta go to New York. Yeah, we need to ride to New, New York. York like... Well, all right, and it transforms into a stagecoach. Then all aboard! I also have Let's something to New York. after New York. No, we're going to be going to Philadelphia. Oh, then after Philadelphia. I'll just keep Oh, don't worry. Pets. I can drink and drive. Uh, oh. I, I trust that's, him. That's setting a really bad day. Now, hold on. There's no proof that uh, drinking impairs your ability to drive, correct? Is that true? I, I suppose. In 1776, I think it is. So! <laughs> 1776! All right! Let these hollow horses lead. Let's go! Just, uh, you can, like, open that little screw top thing and just pour the beer in. Yeah, you could just pour it in while we drive. It's great. No worries. You know, win in Rome, right? Right, all right. And then I'm going to drink some, and then I'll pour it in some. All right, you pour some beer in, and soon he is off and rolling at that high rate of speed once again. And in, in a ridiculously short time, you are able to reach New York as the sun is starting to go down. Just from how fast this thing moves, it's a, a little rough. And let's use up one of those system shocks and sitting in the store since we've got, you know, two more to use. Now let's go down to one and let's uh, move people around on their sliders. Because, well, that's Unbelievable. fun. Why not? Let's, uh, let's start with Vector Ains and Robert Franklin Smith and see where he ends up. And uh, let's, let's just put you in full avatar. Let Robert in the driver's seat and just oh. let that happen. Full Thanks avatar. About to get a lot less flashy. <laughs> it's a lot more punchy, though. On the, uh, the upper end there, let's uh, see what happens with Prudence and Ranger Rhonda. We're just going to flip the switch all the way and put Ranger Rhonda <laughs> in the driver's seat. Yes! She owes us a story. She does, and we're going to get to that in just a moment as soon as we finish these up right here. Uh, and, of course, down in the middle, Margaret May and our, our favorite princess, Princess Hedgehog. We're going to go ahead and let the princess drive. And just all right. full pilot there all the way. Princess Hedgehog. And then for uh, Jean-Pierre and Jonah Mox. We're, uh, again, I can see a trend here. I'm, I'm rolling a lot of ones on this die. The John Mox is going to be in the driver's seat, and let's, let's let that go. Woo! So full pilot going for John Mox. And, hey, since we have... I made it back full... and forth in the first hour. I'm feeling good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Since we have full pilot going up there for Ranger Ronda, let's take a moment and hear a great story from Ranger Ronda about <laughs> learning that human shield merit badge. The morning... So, at the Academy, my home, my favorite place to be in the world, um, I was chosen by a special few other cadets, um, some of the older cadets who um, were always uh, uh, laughing uh, um, when I walked by, um, if I could try and uh, earn my Human Shield Merit Badge, and I had never heard of it before, um, <laughs> but it sounded really cool. So they said, stand there, we're going to turn on the automatic firing uh, gun, and you're just going to stand there and just see how much you can take. And I was like, oh, an, a chance to earn a Merit Badge? It would be my honor. Uh, so they stood uh, behind me. And I think they were just drinking and laughing, but I'm sure highly monitoring uh, what I was uh, uh, taking on. And I just stood there and I jumped. I took it and I took it and I took it. 
Uh, and then I started getting hit with some other bullets. Uh, and uh, they were starting to come from outside of the academy. And uh, all of a sudden, I hear all this yelling behind me. Uh, and all of a sudden, everyone is cowering. And I'm just sitting here, bullets, 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 bullets. Uh, and then eventually, some other cadets started to come out. Uh, and they uh, took out the other people out there. So um, I earned my merit badge. I learned later that's not a thing uh, and that apparently it was a joke. But what happened was uh, actual um, enemies showed up to try and take down the hammer of justice. And I was there, able to save the day, saving the lives of 10 people who apparently didn't like me very much. But I was very happy to get my merit badge, and I like to tell people about it all the time. So whenever you need someone to stand there and take bullets, whether or not it's actual enemies or you just want to make a drink, uh, I'm your gal. <laughs> <laughs> and that was a great, great, and kind of sad story at the same time. Just a little bit. Just, just, just a little sad. Just yeah, a little bit sad. Oof. Real sad. Oh. I loved it. Oh, oh well, before we move on, I want to take a nice moment. People. I want to take a moment and note to uh, all of our audience watching that the Reliable's Twitter has just put a poll up live that will be running for the next week where you get to vote on what Savage World setting you want to see show up next season. Oh, That's right. What are what are their you options? Oh, I don't want to spoil it just yet. Don't, oh, but I'm so but I'm so curious. Well, don't I'm sure me, you can look me. up Twitter. <laughs> okay, I'll stop playing and look up Twitter. What's a Twitter? But I I could maybe tell you, but I really want them to look, so I'm not telling them so that they have to look, and then hopefully they'll vote. Oh, okay. but these are some landmark Savage World settings that uh, would be really cool to see at least one of them show up and you guys get to vote and choose which one and it will occur next season we'll see it we'll be it we'll play it rock the vote Ooh, ooh they're really cool uh -huh. <laughs> you, can tell me. you can tell me it'll be fine i won't tell anyone just secret. tell me i don't know maybe you should also look on the twitters it's very exciting it is very exciting these are these are three of my favorites in a, in a uh, system that basically just has all my favorites in it already. All right. Oh man. So you have now arrived in New York. And of course, it's not the New York that some of you might have any kind of passing knowledge from, from various different timelines and alternate primes, as it's a very primitive New York. There are not a lot of bridges connecting islands out here yet. In fact, there aren't bridges connecting islands out here just yet. It's not a thing. A lot of the, the uh, city is taken some heavy damage from British naval cannons that have been firing upon the city for the past couple of days. The uh, 4th New York Regiment is stationed here under the command of Colonel James Holmes. Oh, that's his where we're command going. Tent, his command tent is highly visible, even from here. All right, we will. Uh... We should. Can we go? Hi, sorry, I interrupted. No, no, go ahead. Can we go see him? His name is Holmes, which makes me think that maybe he's also like a detective or something. So we can be like, hi, uh, uh, and then ask him all kinds of stumpy questions, like right. um, I don't know, uh, 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 a riddle. I need to think of a riddle. I I'm sorry, I failed us. No. But I like where you're going. Your head's in the right place, kid. Thanks, bud. Anyway, we should probably get over there. That's what I was saying. <laughs> you reached the very active command tent of Colonel Holmes. There are people running in and out as he is dispatching orders to his various positions along the waterfront, which are set up to repel the British Navy. <clears throat> Legion of Liberty, I don't recall requesting your support. No, but uh, General Adam said you could use our assistance on our way to do something else. You have us for the day at least. I'll, I'll take it. Uh, it's, it's getting dark and they'll probably do another attack soon. Uh, for the past several nights, the British naval forces have been sending gray coats with teams of elite troops across to uh, destroy my gun emplacements. I'm down to one 
battery of weapons. If this is taken out, I will have no long range defense against those naval ships out there, and they will pound this city into dust. Well, then we have our mission. Pound. We'll defend your gun for you, at least on tonight's attack. Maybe repel it. Can you tell us anything about the gray coats they're sending? They've left no survivors on the attack so far, but, and you'll, you'll have to take this as it sounds, but witnesses claim that they were flying across. Ooh! Great. I can sometimes fly. Now then, perhaps you'll have a solution to this problem. <laughs> <laughs> I have a feeling that uh, Princess Hedgehog's going to be using that whirlwind thing again real soon. <laughs> it's possible. All right, uh, shall we head over to the guns? You are given directions to the final remaining gun battery. They have several cannons set up along the waterfront in fortified positions so that they're not able to be as easily shelled by the British naval ships. But it is the last battery left. They have it crewed and defended, but with only a single regiment defending the entire waterfront. Forces are spread thin, especially as it grows dark and they must be wary of Marines attacking by longboat during the night. Awesome. And the sun sets, and it gets dark very quickly. Uh, do we know where they're sending them from? You're not 100% certain, but uh, you would guess either one of the naval ships that's uh, out there or one of these smaller islands that they have taken possession of. All right. <laughs> do we have any uh, access to... Gunpowder? Uh, well, you are at the gun batteries themselves, and there is a fair amount of gunpowder there, along with shot for all of those cannons. We could set up something uh, with Margaret here, be able to do a little. Yeah, how, how far out? How far out can you hit with one of your normal fireballs? Oh, um, uh, uh, uh. Well, I, I, yes, I have fire, and I know the answer to that. You're all hedgehog sure. right now, is what you're telling me? Yeah, that's the one. That's fine. That's fine. We can work with that. Okay, cool. Cool. The thing is, um, I could maybe, I mean, I could get really close and then, like, maybe switch over to Margaret, and then when I switch over to Margaret, I can flame the thing. Well, as long as you've got some hedgehog going on, we have access to your magic, which they don't know that we have. Mm -hmm. I think... If you repel the flyers when they come over using that thing you do with the flying everywhere stuff, mm. yeah, whatever like that, whatever that is, that would probably get them out of the air quickly, and we can knock them down in the water. Uh, and I feel like uh, Rhonda is going to be great for repelling Marines. Uh, why don't I go sabotage some ships? We have barrels of gunpowder, and I can breathe underwater right now. We don't know how long this is going to last as much as we've been hopping back and forth, so. <laughs> I know. <laughs> if I leave now, I might be able to blow up one of those ships. That sounds like a really Something's good plan. Something's going to happen. James is going to system shock us while I'm in the air and you're underwater. <laughs> He wasn't I don't, you said. I, I, I do not pretend to know our fate, Princess Hedgehog, and I don't know where you would get the idea that I do. I'm still going to try it. So I'm going to basically pocket a barrel of gunpowder. Okay. And, and, uh, will you please explain pocket so that we understand what you mean? Uh, I, am, I am basically uh, making it part of my equipment for all intents and purposes. So you have uh, put a container of gunpowder, a cask of gunpowder, inside of your body. That is correct, yes. Okay. A Jonamox bomb. <laughs> Bombomox. Uh, <laughs> Bombomox. Okay. This could Jonah. never possibly go wrong. This can't possibly go wrong. How could I fail? But we're watching this, right? So yeah. system shock. So. And then... <laughs> 
Now would be the time to drop it, but let me roll my shape change first so I can turn to liquid. This is where things usually go wrong anyway. He might not need the system shock. <laughs> so, of course, I'm going to need that focus roll from you. What have you got for uh, for focus, John? Oh, thankfully, I've got, I've got an 8, which is, you know, good, but not great. All right, a D8 and a D6 for focus. Hey, oh. a seven is a success. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you are able to uh, turn into liquid. It's a rather funny shaped liquid as there's a cask of gunpowder inside of it. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, now I'm a super good swimmer, so I am going to go out towards those ships uh, right at the All start right. of sundown. Or right before you sundown. You slip out into the water, and you get... A pretty distance out towards those ships before it starts to get fully dark. And around that time is when you notice, John and Mox, going through the water around you, away from those tip ships and towards shore, are longboats. Several longboats. And they're trying their best to be very quiet as they paddle through the water towards shore. All right. How fast do the longboats move? Uh, a little faster than your swim speed, but not much. So, like... Faster than 24, which is pretty fast. That's pretty freaking fast. Oh, not well, sorry, not faster than your liquid spin, swim speed. Faster than a normal person's swim speed. So you were actually able to outpace them in your liquid form. Sorry. I did not account for your swimming speed being enhanced as it is. Uh, yeah, so I'm just going to go to the first ship, the one they came from, I suppose. And yeah. right, right on the bow of that ship, I'm going to stick that barrel. Fair enough. Above uh, the water lines. Okay. Below the masthead, you know. Yeah. Some place where a really, really well-trained sharpshooter could hit it. Gotcha. Dear Prudence. <laughs> and then I'm going to swim back like a bat out of hell. Well, like a, you know, a, a liquid. Out of water? Well, because you're so fast, you're actually able once again to catch up to those longboats just as they're starting to near shore and, and overtake I, them. I've always wanted to say this. The British are coming. <laughs> <laughs> By sea. <laughs> Definitively. You don't have to look for a lantern or anything. No, this is this is <laughs> legit. Here, they're behind me right now. All Which right. uh, is a really cool line, but it also sounds really strange coming from a moving puddle that's coming out of the water. <laughs> 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 oh, so yeah. oh. to be said, but I'm better than that. Uh, and through the dark and fog, now one. that you've been made aware, you actually can see the longboats getting closer and closer to shore. And just as that's happening, the naval ships begin some bombardment of various positions along the waterline. And in the air above the water, flying right towards your gun emplacement, there's a pair of individuals. And let's go into some initiative cards, shall we? Hell yeah! And there we have some cards out. Oh, not so great for me. I want to draw okay. another. You want to draw another one? Yes, okay. please. Are you going to use that uh, draw two that's in the store, or do you want to use one of your bennies? No, I want to draw two that's in the store, because that's what they're for. All right. Well, we're <laughs> going to put that right on there. bang a -rang. I mean, Jono Mox. <laughs> now, I, of course... I'm stuck with that six for one, but I have more than one individual, so I'm dragging another card out there. Right. And it's not flipping for me. There we are. Perfect. All right, I get two different cards on this end one. I won't tell you who's for which and what's for what, but I've got two different cards going. Unfortunately, neither of my cards are better than the two king cards that are out, and a king of spades goes before a king of clubs. So that means our Ranger Rhonda, who's currently in the driver's seat, is actually going to be going first. Yeah, I'm going to spend a Benny to go midstream. Okay. I want to go midstream. Benny spent. That's the worst time to stop peeing. It hurts. <laughs> Such good advice. Um, your and I'm more though. What? Nothing. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> Biology. 
<laughs> Helen's talking about kegels again. <laughs> oh lord! Oh lord! Says the I'm girl sorry. I have like episode. three topping <laughs> talking points. <laughs> Sorry, I spent half the episode like licking people's necks, so I don't have anybody. I can't yeah. wait to go back yeah, to the studio, the by the way. <laughs> also, uh, I assumed that was one of your personal bennies you were spending? Yeah, that's one of okay. my personal bennies. Okay, uh, I am keeping I'm, track. Okay, I'm trying to as well. Uh, I, uh, I want to use uh, my sh uh, Prudence's shooting skills and see if we can start this off with a bang and take out that keg on the front of the ship. Oh, the cask full of gunpowder. Uh, well, you do have marksmen, which is going to help offset some of the penalties. Because of the darkness and the distance, that would be a penalty of four to that shot. But because of oh. the marksmen, it only becomes a penalty of two. Okay. Go full Quigley on them. <laughs> so stacking that with your being in the center means you're going to make your shooting roll at a minus three mm. uh, I'm going to spend another Benny and go full prudence alright spending your Benny full prudence so you're only going to be at a minus two on this shooting attempt okay. what is prudence's shooting score prudence's for? shooting is a d10 alright so a d10 and a d6 for the wild die from prudence attempting one heck of a shot. With the minus twos, those probably aren't going to work. You do have one Benny left here to spend, and there's still, I believe, at least one Benny in the store. Do you want to spend your last personal Benny? Yes, please. All right. Spending your last personal Benny to re-roll that shot. Let's try it one more time and see if we can do better. No. The dice just don't like you with that minus two in there. Drops it down to a three. And the shot is just a little low and strikes the bow of the ship, missing that powder keg. No explosion there. Lame. I'm sorry. Uh, Jonah Mox, we're going to go to you next. Uh, still a liquid form, Jonah Mox. Yes, and I'm going to take advantage of that as I've got boats coming in ahead of me. I'm going to yes. use my water spout ability and a cone template to, hear, to hit as many of those boats as I can with a wave of liquid that will hopefully capsize them and make those uh, 18th century Brits have to try and swim, which I'm pretty sure they can't effing do. <laughs> a valid yeah. valid use. Uh, I, I believe that you use shooting for water spout, if I'm I correct. do. Uh, a D8, please. All right. A D8 and a D6 from Jonah Mox attempting to overturn boats. A seven is pretty Take stout, it. but those boats are pretty heavy, so they get to try and compete against that seven. Uh, two of those said boats are struck, so they're going to both also roll D8s and try and beat a seven on both of those boats. No wild die for them. They're just flat D8s on two of them. And both of them going to be a five and a one. Those aren't going to work. Two boats are overturned by the water spout, spilling the Marines aboard into the water. Things could get really dicey for them when we get to their turn. And that's pretty <laughs> dang ugly. Dicey because it's a day we're rolling down. Okay. <laughs> Settle down, Beavis. <laughs> Nailed it. Uh, now, uh, it looks like uh, you've got a spade over there, and spades go before diamonds when it comes to the card suits. So uh, we're going to hear from you over there, Mr. Robert Franklin Smith, before one of my individuals gets to go, or more of my individuals gets to go. I'm not going to tell you who's on which card. Well, there's all these cannonballs around, right? Yes, there are. Time to shot put. <laughs> Hell yeah! Nice. And what are you going to aim for? You've uh, got the boats coming in, and then you have the two flying individuals. How many boats are still in the water? Uh, there are still two other boats that have not been flipped over in the water. Okay. I'm going to go for one in the air and one in the water. Oh, going for two of them. Taking the minus two multi-action penalty. That's going to be athletics for both of those. Yeah. What is your athletics skill? It is 12 plus one. All right. So we're going to be at D12 minus one with the D6. That is going to be a six, which is going to hit the flying individual. So we have a success 
on that flying individual. In fact, uh, with their particular capabilities, that's just barely a hit. So nicely done. And uh, for the dude on or the guys on the boat, uh, let's go ahead and make one more roll for the boat on the D12 and D6 there to see if you hit the boat. It's a much easier target to hit that boat. And a five is more than enough to hit the boat. So we're going to do two different damage rolls. Uh, this will do uh, your traditional strength dice plus a D8 for the uh, shot put uh, cannonball damage. So what is your strength die? And then we'll add a D8 to that for damage though. My strength is a D12 plus three. All right, a D12 plus three and a D8 on the flying target. Because oh, oh, regular wow. cannons are for wusses. Mm. <laughs> I got these. You, I don't need the metal ones. You throw, and you uh, manage to strike, and you're, you're going to put a hurt on one of those flying guys. He's going to get himself a wound out of that deal. Still coming at you, still flying, but he's got himself a wound. I'm going to mark that on that character sheet, and then get one more of those damage rolls of the D12 and the D8 plus 3, this time on a boat. <laughs> Poor boat. It's on a boat. On a boat. Motherfucker, don't you ever forget. Found that eight aces. Hey. Oh, oh, man. Oh, oh. wow. <laughs> that so is going to be a total of 26 damage inflicted to that boat. Uh, the cannonball strikes the prow of that boat, smashing it into pieces. What and boat? it immediately begins to sink. Uh, a cannonball even does a bounce and then back through the rear of the ship, as well, our boat as well, and puts a second hull in it. And so that one is not so going to make it. So he skips the cannonball <laughs> with them, basically? <laughs> yes. He just skipped a cannonball with his throwing arm. Uh, that amazing. just happened. Try just out for Captain Marvels through that ship. <laughs> that is uh -huh. shot putting on a boat. All right. Uh, that means it's going to go to my nine of diamonds, which is next, which is going to be my two flying individuals. One who was wounded which that kind of hurt but that's okay uh we are in fact uh, gonna be dividing both of our attacks among the same individual we're going after robert franklin smith as he has just thrown two cannonballs and made himself clearly the most dangerous threat out there uh, the he's also the biggest target and yes also the biggest target but throwing two cannonballs by hand draws a lot of attention the first individual who you so wounded is uh, going to fly towards you uh, while the second individual staying their location up in the air is going to fire a rifle at you. Mm. So if I can get a uh, D12 and a D6 for my shooting roll on uh, Robert Franklin Smith, that Yo, 12 aces and that God. 6 aces, the last I'll take the 15. So that's going to be a hit with a raise. So if I can get 2d8 plus another d6 rolled for damage on Robert Franklin Smith, I'll, I'll take it. Rough. <laughs> Only oh, eight, though. Uh, that's particularly low. What is uh, the toughness of, of Robert Franklin Smith, by the way? 13. His toughness <laughs> don't care. <laughs> so you are uh, bulletproof against the shot. Uh, the other individual reaches you by flying, coming into land, and attacking you with a sword, in fact, a, a boarding cutlass from used on board a ship. And they're going to get to use a fighting roll. This is a D10, and they have a D6 wild die as well. So I'm going to get a D10 and a D6 roll against your parry. Oh, not oh. particularly good. And with the minus one for being wounded, that's a zero and a two. They are not going to be successful. Those two flying individuals aren't going to do much. And... That takes us to the six of diamonds next, which is mostly people in the water. So one of those... Battle. Wait long boat. Hashtag dance also John Amox. Holy <laughs> shot put through a boat. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. I, I think that's halfway there to a dance yep. party, or is it a full dance party? That's halfway. Halfway, okay. all right. We are halfway to the <laughs> dance party. Don't have a lot of room to dance. So that's okay. We're not there yet. You've got a little bit of time to figure it out while they uh, put the second one together. Now, I think that it looks like I'm looking at a full street, though, where like I'm like, oh, I don't have any room at all in this giant, <laughs> this giant Boston village. Really. 
The Six of Diamonds is the Longboats. Only one of those Longboats is going to make it to shore on this turn, and uh, the eight Marines on board disembark. The uh, other three boats are uh, going to have to try and, well, sink or swim. And to make it faster than rolling a bunch of dice, I'm going to use the traditional Savage Worlds rules of when you use a bunch of groups of, of extras to act together, they roll one die, but they get to roll a wild die, too. So if I can do a pair of D6s three different times for uh, all three boats to see if any of these individuals can swim to shore or sink. All right, well, boat one, we're going to have a success. So let's get that two more times. Boat two, also going to have a success. That's great. And boat three, the third boat. Aces. Oh, man. So uh, it looks like three boatloads of Marines are going to be able to swim to shore. But that's all those individuals are going to be able to do for their turn as they are simply swimming. And worse, none of their weapons that are firearms are going to be capable of shooting at this point because all of their powder is now waterlogged they will be stuck to using hand-to-hand -hand combat. Now, of course, the Six of Diamonds isn't just the uh, enemy soldiers, but the friendly soldiers located within those gun and battery emplacements are going to be opening fire on said swimming and disembarking Marines because, well, you're not alone defending these gun emplacements. And we'll America. use those same tactics, and if I can get the D6 and the D6 rolled, for the defenders, opening fire, shooting. Oh, the big one, the two. The defenders shooting is not particularly great. They mostly shoot water and the air around their targets. And the great billowing cloud of powder smoke fills the air, uh, making vision a little bit obscured and very, very loud at the same time. And that is going to bring us to our princess. Hedgehog, right. Minutes. Okay. Um, so we've got Marines crawling out of the water, all mm -hmm. soft and wet. Mm -mm -mm. I um, think I had this dream last night. <laughs> <laughs> Weirdly, all of them look like Colin Firth. Um, <laughs> I know. We had oh. very different dream lives. Yeah. <laughs> um, why? Which ones did yours look like? I don't even want to talk about it right now. I'm still oh, shaking. Oh. Matthew McFadden, different Darcy. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, we might have to fight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this might be a... You guys are going to be fight. Nerd fight. Nerd fight. Nerd Okay. Um, so we've got Marines crawling out of the water, all looking like Colin Firth. Um, and then we have how many individuals that are... I know one of them, one of the flying individuals has a sword on my boy. Yes, he is no longer flying. He has landed and is attempting to skewer Robert Franklin Smith. The other is just sort of hovering in midair and reloading their rifle to prepare to fire it again. Okay, sure. Um, how close are they? Uh, you're about 10 yards from the flyer and about 4 yards from the individual on the ground. Uh, the Marines are probably about 5 or 8 yards away on the embankment. Some of them, you know, there's eight of them that came aboard on the boat, so they're still dry. The others are not so dry because they had to swim. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. All right. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to fly up to the flyer and then, like, throw a burst um, of havoc just right in his chest. So going for two different spells. Okay. I am. Spell casting for flying first. You're a D12 on spell casting, correct? I am. I am. Right, a D12, D12 and a D6 with a minus two multi action penalty for the fly. Oh, no! Oh! <laughs> no. That's, that's backlash, too, because it's magic. Yes, that is, in fact, some magical backlash oh. that will be triggered. That's not oh, going to be is fun. What I do! <laughs> yeah. Welcome to good. my world, Hedgehog. <laughs> Yeah, unfortunately, that's not so particularly great as, uh, you know, things can happen with magical backlash. Of course, you know, I could have been prepared for it and uh, had that page <laughs> of the book open ahead of time, but I absolutely was not. Oh, wait, you don't you don't have a second monitor? Uh, not with the book on it. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but it's that's all right because okay. I have it because I have uh, an index here which tells me everything. 
You know, if we if you just want to skip the blow oh no, back, it just means uh, you're going to incur yourself a level of fatigue from casting that spell. So you're going to be at a minus one on everything you do until you get some rest. But but yeah, that's not fair. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's how, that's how but hey. Works. You did multi-action, so you still have a Havoc spell that's going to go off. Of course, instead of just being at the minus two multi-action penalty, now you're fatigued, so it's at a minus three. And, you know, just ups the chances of getting another one of those uh, no. critical failures. So let's Explode. get one more spell casting roll from Princess Seems so, well, uh, uh, I did want to know It seems something. like you have backfired terribly. Hashtag jam one to everything for thee. Oh, boy. <laughs> Oh, just, believe me, I'm going to be using those bennies. Did you just I'm going get to keep more bennies? Uh, yep. I'm going to use them to keep our two flying individuals alive for as long Who as possible. Who is it that hates wow. us so much out there? Wow. Oh, you know. What did we do to you? <laughs> I have to know. All right, I still need that spell casting roll for your Havoc, so that's going to be a D12 minus 3 and a D6. I, Seriously, I is this about DFA Legacy? Okay, well, the six explodes. But I want to know, since I'm not going to be leaving the ground, and I, I don't know how far my Havoc can reach, uh, if I can redirect that at our um, Marines. You absolutely right. can redirect it at Marines on the ground instead, because they will be within range. And that, even with minus three, is still going to be a success. Just shy of getting a raise, too. <sighs> And so that's going to target a group of those poor Marines that just made it up onto the embankment. If for them, I can get another D6 and D6 for the whole group to just work it as one group again to see what happens with those poor guys. Uh, and with a one and a two, those eight Marines that just crawled out of the water <laughs> immediately fly back into the water about eight yards offshore, about the distance that they capsized in that they first swam from. So there are eight Marines that are now back in the water because of that spell casting. And I am going to uh, discard our cards and deal out another set. Yeah! <laughs> and it looks like we had a Joker come up. <laughs> oh, thank goodness. That gets every single one of you friendly characters a Benny added back into your little Benny pile. Now I don't Everybody have Everybody gets a Benny. All of you. You get a Benny, and you get a Benny, and you get a but Not you, James. <laughs> I know. Don't worry. You guys are critical failure, and I'll get one anyway. Holy no. Smokes, uh, wow. Like now, uh, would you like to start us off because you got that Joker, or you want my bad guys to go first? Oh, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. Um, I am going to start doing some awesome stuff because I've got uh, a bonus, right? Yep, you get a plus two to anything you do this turn. God, that's beautiful. Uh, that, means I, <laughs> that means I can shape change and, <laughs> and do something else. Uh, that's so right. I, so I will. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to go into an air form now all right so let's start with the focus roll because you're going to do a multi-action you lose that plus two bonus but you're just going to be at a straight focus roll right i'm just so hoping i'm just i'm just trying not to give you bennies at this point go. <laughs> yeah. a, a d8 d6. and a d6 yeah a d8 and a d6 for the focus roll Ooh, here we on. go That's a good enough. success That's good enough and you become air and are able to now fly because you are a cloud of gas. That's what can I Can we just talk about, for. can we just talk, can we just, <laughs> I would just like to put, you know, this is the second week in a row that somebody has stolen my thing. And, you know, I'm just, like, I might, I'm not saying, but I might be saying, like, you know, I'm kind of tired of it. That's it. That's all. Just, I you know, ya. just. No, I gotcha. I gotcha. That totally makes sense yeah. to me. Yeah. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Wait. No, it's the second week in the row that you have done it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is it? Yeah, yeah, it is. It, it and, is. And it weirdly, is. you keep yeah. failing miserably when you do things. It's more like we've switched that I've taken your thing. Oof. Right? I'm just wondering what kind of, like, voodoo curse you have put on me. Oh, and, uh, I would you know, show you. gaming yeah. gods? Well, I've got a green screen up. Otherwise, I'd show you the arcane library behind me that I use only to curse you, Helen. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, 
The thing is that he doesn't even sound like a stretch. <laughs> Speaking of stretching, uh, I'm going to be. Yeah. Gonna be using my Are you going to steal another one of my things? You're going to steal another one of my things? Mm. I'm going to be using a, my Wind Blast ability now to uh, attack the flyers. All right. Uh, the only one is still in the air. The other had landed on the ground to sword fight with Robert Franklin Smith. That but was a still mistake on his form. part. He would have been better <laughs> off getting Wind Blasted. Robert's going to tear him in half. He done made a mistake. Yeah, true. So how uh, exactly are you, is, is that working? Is that also a shooting roll? It, it is, yeah. Yeah, it is. So that's a D8 and a D6, correct? It is a D8 and a D6, correct. Oh, oh a six is a success. I'll take it. I will take it. He uh, basically just gets not hurt. Uh, I'm not doing damage. I'm just hurling him 2D6 feet or squares in any direction. All right. So if I can get another 2D6 rolled, please, to see how far through the air this uh, hurls him. One square is five feet, so I'm looking at. Oh, that's six and aces. Uh huh. So looking at uh, twelve yards or, or twelve set or twenty-four total yards thrown by that uh, that uh, air attack, so that launches him quite a bit of distance through the air. And it oh, also... I, was, I was hoping for down. Oh, you're going down. Yeah, oh, in wouldn't... that particular case, yes, you propelled him straight into the water then, in that particular case. Mm. Splash down. With that rifle, he just spent all that time reloading. Oh, <laughs> now his powder's oh, wet. And now his you guys should reconsider wet. how you do naval combat. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it is not over yet. Uh, I guess both... Well, both queen cards come up next, and the queen of spades is my two flyers who come up first. We're going to start with the one that's on the ground, attempting to uh, use a cutlass against Robert Franklin Smith. He's going to go ahead, and I'm going to make two attacks with him with that multi-action penalty this you time fool. around. So if I can get a fighting roll of a D10 and a D6 against Robert Franklin Smith, please. Going against your parry, that six aces... <laughs> and becomes, uh, well, reduced down to an eight because of the multi-action penalty. Does an eight beat your parry? My parry is eight. All right, so we have one, and then if I can get the D10 and D6 for the second attack. A nine. Both of those cutlass attacks are going to hit. That nine, nine becomes a two. seven, actually, because of the multi-action penalty. Yeah, I, I got, can't skip my multi-action penalty, so only one of those actually ends up hitting. Uh, seven won't be your parry score. So we're going to do a D12 plus a D8 damage to Robert Franklin Smith. No. Ten, and I don't think even ten is higher than your toughness, is it? It is uh, appar toughness. Yeah, Apparently they don't call the sword that because it cuts more. Oh! Oh! <laughs> I'll give you that one. Uh, but it is still a pretty substantial blow, though it doesn't harm your near impervious oh. skin. This individual is significantly stronger than a normal person. Now, the other flyer was going to be able to, you know, shoot that trusty rifle of his. But I'm not just, being just... able to do that because the powder is wet reduces them to having to do an a inferior attack. Uh, they will fly forth from the water and, uh, well... They're, they're going to try and skewer prudence on the end of the uh, bayonet of their rifle. So if I can get a fighting roll of a D6 and a D6, they aren't particularly talented at this. Trying to beat Prudence's parry. Or I think it's Ranger Run. Or no, it is Prudence's parry. A it's five. Does a five, does a five beat your parry? No, it does not. My parry is a seven. Okay. This, uh, this individual is not so great at the close quarters combat and is not able to stab you with that bayonet strike. That, of course, goes to the Queen of Clubs next. Since we already have those six-sided dice out there, those poor eight Marines that got sent right back in the water, let's see if they drown and give me a D6 and a D6 for them. Drown them. A uh, five. They're going to make it to shore, but that <laughs> did keep them out of the fight for another turn. Uh, the other three groups of Marines are going to engage with the individuals on those gun emplacements. So I'll take a D6 and a D6 for them for uh, combat rolls, please. 
We're going to do these three total times. The six aces. And aces again. For a total of 15, the uh, only group of Marines to stay dry manages to fire with rifles and take down five defenders of the uh, colonist side on those gun emplacements. Man, Whereas the Marines other two really groups... Kick-ass Marines. Sir. <laughs> Uh, if I can get that D6 to D6 twice more for close combat. Not bad. And then one more time. But in close combat, they're only able to bring down one of the colonists defending. Now, the colonists retaliate with their own D6 and D6 in uh, both close combat and range against their enemies. Ooh, a one. <laughs> And a one, and the colonists critically fail at defending and Colonist. don't manage to take out a single one of the British Marines attacking their emplaced gun positions. Those guys are not doing very good. Looks like it's just up to you. And uh, that a, takes us to uh, Prudence with the Nine of Clubs next. At least it's good we're here. Yeah, uh, in yeah. anticipation of my roll or of my turn, I'm gonna I'm gonna spend a couple of bennies and get over one benny and get uh, get into the middle so I can access some fire. Absolutely, benny spent. You're gonna move the slider to the middle, and Prudence, what are you gonna do? Okay, let me just. Uh, lots of things have happened, so give me lay of the land again. The, the boat with the. Do we have the keg of powder still on the? Longboat? It's still on there, okay. and then you know that not always it's still on that boat. There are marines that have landed that are fighting the defenders of the gun emplacements. One of the flying uh, gray coats is attacking Robert Franklin Smith with the sword. The other one is trying to stab you with the bayonet end of their rifle in close combat. Wonderful. Uh <laughs> I guess I should deal with the guy who's trying to stab me. Um, <laughs> let's see. You can do it either or. Getting stabbed has never really bothered Prudence that much. Not really that much. Um, yeah, let's let's fuck with this guy a little bit. Mess with this guy a little bit. <laughs> um, you don't have to correct one, yourself guys. after yes. you've already said it. You know that, right? <laughs> I, just, I just like to acknowledge I made a mistake. That's our oh one my. for the episode. If James. we have another one, it stops James, being... James, you critically you failed. Be. Now am I have to give your friends some hashtag benefits. John Amox, Vector, Ronda, Princess. I'm an equal opportunity critical fail donator. Have fun. Looks like you guys got a Benny out of that critical failure by the colonists. <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh, thank God. Thank you, Chad. Oh, we really um, needed it. That's true. <laughs> Those colonists uh, are not doing well. Since I am about to do some close combat, I'm going to spend the Benny that I got from the Joker pull, and I'm going to yes. move myself to the middle. Move to the middle. Uh, I think Prudence at this point grabs the the gun, you know, does the does the just the boss move of shoving the bayonet into the stomach, pulling the guy closer, oh, growling at his face. And then we're going to grapple and see if we can just headlock the guy and start Rhonda pounding this person into the face. See if we can, we can get All them right, to... that is going to be a multi-action for out. that. Uh, I'm going to need an athletics roll first for uh, self-impalement on a bayonet. Uh, that's a D12. All right, a D12 and a D6. Minus one because you're in the middle, but you're in the middle, so you get both. And uh, a five is going to be a success. You uh, stab yourself with the uh, bayonet. So uh, uh, that's going to be a uh, D6 and a D6 for damage done on Prudence. So if we can get two D6 damage done against Prudence. Uh, six aces. And becomes a total of ten. What is Prudence's toughness? Prudence's toughness. I know this. I can find it. It is nine. All right, that is enough to injure Prudence. Does something happen when Prudence gets injured? Yeah, she doesn't get injured. She just... Oh, you have a reflexive power use, so that means you're going to need to make a healing roll in response to being hurt. This happens automatically without any trigger on your part. What is your... Uh, penalty? What is, what's the role for healing for you? No multi-action penalty. It's on its own. Uh, D12. All right, a D12 and a D6. Still at the minus one because you're in the middle, but that six aces. 
And you're going to get yourself a total of 10, which is a success with a raise, more than enough to completely heal the wound that you have just inflicted upon yourself. Can it heal so hard that I literally grip, I now have a bayonet through my body, and it just has healed so yes. hard and so immediately. Not the whole gun, but the bayonet now is just a part of my abdomen. The bayonet is now fused to your abdomen. Uh, you made the athletics roll to grapple onto them, and I'm going to need the fighting roll to uh, pummel them. D12. All right, a D12 and a D6 for the fighting roll. Minus one, I guess, with that. Uh, we are going to get uh, an 8 on that, which uh, is actually a 6 because of the multi-action penalty, but this individual is not very good at close combat and only has a 5 parry, so that still hits them because, well, they're, they, they prefer to use rifles and maintain range. So you're going to get to do unarmed damage against them. What kind of damage, uh, what, what strength does Prudence have? Strength is a D8, uh, but it's a plus D6 because I'm... Are with Rhonda. That's right. So if I get a D8 and a D6 rolled for damage, please. A 6 and 4 is 10. And uh, I'm going to spend one of my GM bennies because I, I want to soak some of that damage and keep this person in the fight. So if I can get a D8 and a D6 rolled to try and soak, please. And that's going to be just enough to soak with a four. We're going to survive that impact and not take any further injury. Oh, no, I got to take that back. That still injures them because they're already wounded and suffer a minus one penalty to that roll. So they don't, in fact, soak that wound, and they are now wounded twice. Benny is spent. Ah, I hate it when a Benny is spent for no particular good reason. Nicely done. Prudence. Prudence is just like, I fight bears for a living, <laughs> and you ain't nothing. <laughs> and uh, Seven of Hearts is going to go before Seven of Clubs. What have you got for us over there now that uh, you've got some Margaret May mixed in? Right, so I'm thinking that maybe I'll um, create fire in, in every dry enemy powder um, horn. Oh, wonderfully done. And that's going to require elemental manipulation. What's, what's your skill with that? Careful. Uh, Most of the dry ones are next to colonists in close combat, though, so be careful. Uh, it's the wet ones that are next to colonists in close combat. Oh, so one excellent. of the dry ones maintain distance because they were able to still shoot their guns, unlike the others. Good. Um, can can I also can I also just sort of uh, throw in the barrel on the uh, prow of the ship as well? Oh, you want to throw fire at the power ship too? Yeah, I'm gonna. You're gonna be taking a multi-action penalty to do. Oh it, no no no! Sorry 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 sorry. No, I meant I meant if I'm if I'm uh, uh, creating fire in uh, all of those uh, places of all. That's gonna be too far to uh, simply create fire. Okay. That I just sense. wanted to check. I, I I can I can wait around because I'm already. I think I'm at a negative two on this. All right. So if we can get a uh, yeah. let's put your uh, uh, it's a ten. All right. Oh no, D it's an eight. Sorry, okay. it's an eight. A D8 and so a D6. So I'm going to have to roll really, really well. <laughs> oh, no, you got just good enough. A 6 reduced Ooh. by 2 is a 4, which is a basic success. And fire is created in the dry powder horns of the eight completely dry British Marines <laughs> who detonate in 4D6 explosion. So if I <laughs> can get a 4D6 damage explosion done to those poor British Marines, we're going to see what happens to them. I'm guessing soup, but uh... <laughs> guys, I, I'm feeling a little like a traitor right now. Oh my! <laughs> oh my God! Three of those oh ace, <laughs> and the explosion is a chain reaction of events that is so devastating that shrapnel gets into the backs of at least a dozen more of the wet marines uh, further away from them that are fighting colonists, and mm. more than twenty marines are brought down by your explosive attack. <laughs> Way to go, Margaret May, with the fire coming in clutch. It's a fire yes. glass. All right. Uh, Robert blow, Franklin blow Smith, what have you got for us? Well, it's not going to be that big of a, a deal, but I'm going to look at this gentleman with a sword in front of me. I'm going to pull out my axe and go, 
Let's dance. I want to <laughs> do a multi-action. I want to kick him in the stomach and then just chop down into his head. <sighs> All oh. right. That's two fighting rolls minus two penalty for multi-action. And what's our Robert Smith? So he's a D12 fighting? He's a D12 fighting. All right. A D12 and a D6 at a minus two for the kick. Gonna get a three on that. Do you want to re-roll get a Benny that? re-roll on that? Benny spent <laughs> re-rolling that a D12 and a D6. That one is gonna be a success, just barely with that two-point penalty. As Oof. his parry is a seven. And then for the axe, I need the D12 and D6 as well. Oh, the six aces. <laughs> And aces again. Yeah. He did. Man, dead. That axe is going to hit with a raise. So let's start with the kick damage first. That's unarmed. Just one? Just one raise? <laughs> you only get one if you're fighting. So, no, fine. So the kick damage is a d12 plus a d4 plus three. All right. D12 plus a d4 plus three. For a total of 10 damage, which is just enough to match match his toughness. So he is going to be shaken. Oh, wait, sorry, wrong sheet. That's one over. Still going to be a shaken result, which uh, I'm not going to spend a Benny to ignore that because it's not worth my Benny. Now, the axe. The axe, not only is it going to do your list of damage, but you get to add a D6 because of the race. So then it's going to be a D12... Plus a D6, <laughs> plus three, plus the raise D6. All right, one more D6 and then wow. three added to it. Not particularly high rolls on that. It's only going to be a 12. However, shaken twice does result in a wound. Still not going to spend one of my bennies because I don't feel like fighting shakens off is worth my bennies, even if two shakens resulting in a wound is an occurrence from it. And here we go into what may be the final round of this combat as we uh, discard these cards and flip up some more ones. This time, of course, I'm going to have to shuffle the deck because a uh, joker mm. was drawn. Cards going out and flipping. Oh, I got to do a second card for uh, Jonah Mox's yeah. four. is not going to work for him. So instead... I won't go fast. You'll get that. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And my flying bad guys will get that. Well, none of them are flying anymore, but... Either way, that's going to start us with the uh, Ace of Hearts. So we're going to start right where we ended, Robert Franklin Smith. And you just get to go right into it again. How, how's this guy looking? Uh, well, he's bloody. You've definitely wounded him with that axe shot and that kick, but he's still fighting. We're, we're going to keep on hacking. Axe and axe twice. All right. I need a D12 and a D6 with a minus two penalty twice for those axe attacks. Axe attacks. That one doesn't look like it's going to hit, so I'm going to re-roll that with a Benny. Re-rolling with a Benny. Yeah, that go. one's gonna there hit. Go. All right, and then the second one, another D12 and D6 for the second axe attack. You know what? Is that a hit? It won't be. Uh, let's let's one more Benny then. All right, that is your last personal Benny. And that six it. aces. Well, it looks like the, you're going to get a raise on that one. So we've got one attack at its normal damage and one attack with that extra D6 for raise. Mm -hmm. So a D12 and a D6, Plus and then a D12 three. and two D6 for the two different damage rolls, if I can get those. Oh, that's All right, first one is going to be doing four, five, six, seven, eight. Second one, I need another D6 added to. We're at 12 on the second one. Ups to uh, 18. Ups to 21. 24 damage on the second one. Oof. Going to have to spend a Benny to try and soak some of that. If I can get a D8 gold. 
please. Do you have to, though? <laughs> do you really have do? to? And I not only need to roll it, I need to ace it. Oh, you did. Roll that again. Let's see if it aces again. Ten. Still not enough. That's oh. still 14 damage that goes through, which is going to be enough to get two more wounds in, even with the soak. And that individual is now incapacitated. Target down. One down. Freedom. <laughs> and that's going to take us to uh, Jonah Mox with the Ace of Diamonds after that. Hola. Uh, who's still got powers? <laughs> uh, you've got the one that is in close combat with Rhonda that has powers that she is attempting to pummel to death. All right. Uh, I'm going to spend two bennies. Go back to Spending two, two bennies. Going back to the other side because I don't know the risks of deep diving. <laughs> there you go. No metagaming from me. Uh, Full Jean-Pierre, all avatar. Uh, and I will uh, make sure I oh, have my weapon out. And uh, I'm going to do a feint attack on the one fighting Rhonda. All right. You're going to do a feint first. So uh, give me a, a fighting roll for that feint attack. Uh, that'll be a d10. All right, a D10 and a D6 for the faint. We can get a six. Uh, so would you like him to oppose that with agility or smarts? Uh, I would like... Uh, what is it? Smarts. I mean, he's a soldier, right? Yeah, so he's going to get a D6 and a D6 to try and beat that six against him. So if I can get two six-sided dice rolls to see if he can beat that faint attempt... Neither of them are going to do it. Your feint is successful. It's not a raise, but successful, which means he is distracted. So you have a plus two bonus to your next attack against him. Which I will be taking against him. Which you don't get a multi-action penalty when you feint, do you? No, I do not. That's why I went all the way to Jean-Pierre before I fought him. Because he is a dirty ability. fighter. He is a dirty fighter. So dirty. Uh, what's, what's his fighting skill again? D10. Uh, D10 not as, not as good as Jonah time. Box, but he has a way bigger sword. So, <laughs> All right, D10 and a plus two this time because that's so it's going to be a 10, which is going to beat his parry. And because you and Rhonda are both engaged with him, it is beating his parry with a raise because you get a plus <laughs> one bonus for two on one fighting. That is so you get to add move. a D6 damage to your damage result. Right. Uh, let's take a look at what my damage result is with this rapier. Uh, so it's my... Strength plus D8 plus D4. Plus a D6. Damn. That's Ooh, a lot of dice. Strength is a D8 plus a D8 plus D4. All right. D8, D8, D4, D6. That's a lot of stabbing damage. Yeah. And that Dang. six aced. Dang. Who in work? Uh, what are you we know, I'm going to use one of those bennies <laughs> to try and soak one of my... How, ma how much bennies? damage did I do? Wow. 18. 18. How only one of those... You know what? I'm going to spend a benny. Spend a benny and re-roll it? Yeah. All right. Two eights, a four, and a six. Re-rolled again. See if you can do better than oh, did we roll the? We didn't re-roll the four. That was the problem. That was the problem. Uh, so, uh, my mistake. We're at 18, and just give me a four sided dice roll, please. Just a four sided dice. My fault. I didn't catch that. It's okay. So, you're at 19. I'll Still going to use a Benny to try and soak against that. So, if I can get a uh, D8 and a D6 rolled to try and soak some of that. Oof. Come on. Ah, oh, there's, there's one. There, yeah. Oof. 11. Still going to be. Seven going through onto that, which uh, is enough to get in there and uh, be a shaken result. So this individual is now shaken uh, and wounded. As we go to, oh, Rhonda slash Prudence. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I'm going to grab the um, bayonet from my abdomen and pull it out and just... Uh, well, part of Prudence, uh, Prudence has bloodthirsty as part of her, um, character hindrances. Um, so she's gonna take it and jab it up. We're, you know, we're gonna do, uh, the, the Edgar Wright movie 
through the chin into the face. But I am still part prudent, so uh, as I do that, I, you know, for justice! So. <laughs> All right. That is going to be a called shot, which means it was going to be a little more difficult, but it will do more damage if it does happen to hit. All what right. Is, uh, what's your fighting score you got? Uh, you fighting, using? I got a D12. All right, D12. But minus... Give me a D12 and a D6. Yep, minus one because of the uh, being in the middle, and then minus two for the called shot. But plus one because you're double teaming them with Jean Pierre, and because Jean Pierre managed to make them distracted, plus two more. So essentially, offsetting all three points of penalties, you get to keep your standard die roll at an eight, which is going to succeed. So you're going to get to hit them with that bayonet. So I need to know your strength so we can figure out damage. Uh, strength, we are going to go with, I'm sure it's a, D, it's a D10. All right, so that means that we need a D10 and 2D6 for damage done by this attack. Not particularly high. Do you want to take it or do you want to spend one of the bennies in the store to re-roll it? I, uh, let's spend a Benny, please. All right, Benny spent. Let's re-roll that D10 and 2D6 and try and get a higher result. For justice! That is definitely higher. Uh, that is going to be 16. None of them ace, but still 16. Uh, I am not going to burn any more of my GM Bennies to soak, and I'm going to let this individual take that, which is enough, of course, to incapacitate them as well. I'm saving my bennies as though I know what's going to happen next episode and want to use them all oh, no. then. <laughs> oh, wait. For I know what's going to happen next episode, and I want to use them all then. With the two ringleaders down, it, it takes no effort to turn the tide of battle on the gun emplacements and defeat and repel the remaining British Marines from these gun positions and carry the day. Uh, I, I want to do something. You really needed to do something there. I can tell Margaret really had something that they wanted to do. I really, really did. I'd like to spend a Benny to go full Margaret May. Okay. And, uh, you know, I really wanted to burn down that ship, so uh, I'm going to use It bolt. just takes a little spark for this one. So. <laughs> All right. Uh, what do you, what's your die roll for Bolt? Uh, it's a 10. All right, can I get a D10 and a D6 for Margaret May? Oh, no. Throwing some fire at a small container of gunpowder. Not so small. And uh, the explosion that happens is uh, tremendous. <laughs> Not only is it tremendous because you hit the powder keg and blow it up, but as it blows, because of the way that the British naval ships were designed in this particular time period, towards the bow of the ship in the front of the hold was where a lot of the powder stores were. They didn't keep all of them together to prevent an entire ship from simply being destroyed in one lucky shot. But the bow was a place where some of the powder stores were kept. And those, of course, detonate in a chain reaction explosion, which completely destroys one of the British ships out there in the water. Vive la France! <laughs> it's a massive, fiery explosion, and cheers are heard from the Colonials all the way down the embankment as the uh, British Marines, losing a ship, losing their surprise attack, and losing morale, retreat back to their longboats to lick their wounds and on escape. The land and, on the sea, and I'm going to go up to Jean Pierre, and I'm going to say, and that's how you burn it down. <laughs> idea that we're all like oh we've won the battle that was excellent and then all of a sudden it's just boom and everybody looks at margaret may and it's like what <laughs> oh were we done sorry. <laughs> oh i'm sorry were we supposed to let them go <laughs> i suppose that would have been the gentlemanly thing to do but um oh i'm not a gentleman <laughs> and that ladies and gentlemen is our episode oh, oh that's fun <laughs> and they got a bang uh -oh. coming up next week Independence Hall under an onslaught of attack from forces of evil will our heroes be able to protect the colonial congress find out next week on the reliables thank you all for watching I hope you guys enjoyed the show uh, make sure to check out TFN and the Zoe discord 
Check out The Reliables on Twitter, where you can vote on one of three settings. To, you'll get to see next season. Your choice. It'll be there. We're going to be it. It's going to happen. They're going to visit it. Uh, don't forget to check out Void Jumpers, uh, Zoe Game Nights, Wednesdays and Thursdays, both here on this channel. And we love you guys, and we will see you next week. <laughs> Is it Bye,